This episode of the MSB Podcast is brought to you by Big Tex Outdoors. Everything you could possibly need for your firearm. If he doesn't have it, you probably don't need it. And Filster Holsters. Can't do a sub-five-second fast drill? We'll get a Filster Holster. If you still can't, well, at least you know it's not the holster's fault. And primary and secondary. The definitive source for the armed professional and the responsible citizen. Quit your bitching about all the rules and get better. Hey guys, uh, welcome back to the Modern Samurai Project uh, podcast. Uh, sorry for uh, a little bit of the delay there, man. Been traveling uh, to uh, California, then Texas, then Arizona. Uh, train a lot of good people, uh, mostly cops, man. Very, very humbled in that. So again, I apologize for uh, a little bit of the delay, but uh, I'm going to make it up with it with my very good friend here, uh, Mike Green. Uh, Mike Green, we know how long we known each other, man. Going on three, four years now, probably. Yeah, about, yeah it's three or four. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, and the first and the first time we ever had like a really good in depth conversation, I think was at like at the N- Friends of NRA meet uh, oh, dinner. Yeah. Remember yeah. that? Three years ago, so maybe it's been longer. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, 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 dude. My uh, my wife yelled at me after that, dude, because I was like, "Hey, we go to this nice dinner. All you do is talk to Mike Green for three fucking hours. What the <laughs> fuck?" I'm like, "Sorry, honey." <laughs> my bad my bad dude so anyway hey uh again guys welcome back to the modern summary project uh podcast man uh you know nicknamed the uh get better podcast nicknamed the self-reliant podcast uh number one you know it's about martial arts medical training with uh you know firearms fitness all that other stuff so that you get that complete patch because no one's coming to save you man it's up to you so get better uh, and one of the uh, people that I think is one of the most complete packages or examples of that is, again, my friend Mike Green. So, uh, Mike, per my course, my normal course, uh, I don't do intros too much. So can you tell us a little bit about yourself and your background? Right on. So uh, I started off in the military. I spent uh, 15 years in uh, special forces. Uh, during that time, you know, I spent three years as an assaulter and what they call a SIF. I think now they're calling them a CRIF, but our primary mission was, you know, CQB and advanced marksmanship. So we trained up for that almost daily. Uh, I spent three years as a platform instructor teaching anti-terrorism stuff. Um, and then uh, my last two years I spent as a SIFALC instructor teaching uh, CQB and advanced marksmanship. Uh, I got out after that. I worked overseas, did some contracts for the government. Um, but in between, I trained folks up for going overseas. Um, and I started working for a few companies here and there teaching. Um, and then I started working full time for the government and decided to open up, uh, you know, training to civilians. And mm-hmm. I've been doing that for, I think, about five years now. It's kind of a weekend thing for me since I got a full time job that, that keeps me busy. And yep. then, uh you know, I stay busy um, uh, with the family. That's a big part of it, you know. Uh, mm-hmm. But uh, I really got a lot of great exposure when I was in the military. A lot of stuff that I paid to do now, I got to do for free when I was in the military. Um, you know, I got a, a, a blue belt from Hoist Gracie. Um, you know, I uh, got to shoot a lot of rounds. Uh, you know, was pretty good, uh, pretty fit back then, you know. Um just a lot of stuff that we take for granted once we, you know, people get out, they don't realize what the, how good they had it when they were in. But yeah. Yeah. Uh, 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 yeah, a- a- absolutely, man. If I, it, every time that I talk to some of my, you know, uh, former mill buddies and they're just like, man, if I had that ammo now, <laughs> I'd be so much better. Like, well, Chris size love, yeah. we were talking about that, man. He's like, Scott, I just bought my first thousand rounds of two, two, three. Holy crap. That's expensive. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> like, I'm like, bro, you should have seen it in 2013. <laughs> oh. That's a, people ask me about gear all the time, and I'm like, I don't know. They're like, what do you mean you don't know? I'm like, I would just use what they issued me, you know? Right, right, so, yeah. right, exactly. So, you know, here's the thing I want to talk to you, man, because you're you've been you've been training uh, in the training game for a while now. Like, how long has Green Ops been around? Well, as far as an open enrollment thing, we've been around for five, about five years. But uh, Green Ops, I started that right after I got out of the military. Um, and I would get contracts to do uh, pre-deployment training. Let's say mm-hmm. somebody, a bigger company had a, a contract, they would okay. sub to me. So the company has been around for a while now, since like 2005. 
But as far as open enrollment, it's been the last five years. Okay. All right. So, you know, I, enough with the, to be a, uh, a substantial part of the whole training explosion of the last five, six years or so. And uh, one of the one of the awesome things I find about your curriculum um, or your or your catalog is that you do everything from basic handgun to advanced handgun to concealment to basic carbine all the way through advanced carbine um, and competitive skills and drills classes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right? Because you are also a master class USPSA shooter production, right? Yep. Production in, in production. So how does a guy. You know, let's talk a little bit about that, right? Because, you know, you have your whole tactical Timmy versus gamer fag thing going on, yeah. right? You know what I mean? And, it, you know, sometimes it dies down and then it just flares up again oh. out of the out of the blue, yeah. you know? And it's usually because some raging cock face just came out of the military and, you know, says that stuff is stupid or something like that, right? So where's your history and all that, man? How did you start competing? Because I think that's an interesting story that the audience needs to hear. Yeah, so it is. It is interesting, you know. Being at, at uh, you know, Fort Bragg, I went through a course called Sephardic, and it was a, an eight-week course where the first two weeks was advanced marksmanship, and the rest of the six weeks was just CQB. And they started off, and they showed us this video of this guy shooting, running, and gunning, and that was Jerry Barnhart. You know, they mm. showed changing mags and stuff like that. And uh, you know, I remember I was like, "Wow, what is that?" You know, and they said, "You know, that that was USPSA." And then. Uh, Shortly after I graduated Sephardic, a mutual friend of mine introduced me to this guy who ran local three gun matches in the area that got be got to be pretty big. And uh, his name was Kyle Lamb, and Kyle Lamb took me to my first uh, Ipsic match. Basically, uh, a guy held my hand, walked me through everything. You know, took his time with me, and and he didn't know me from Adam. You know, he just we just had a mutual friend. You know. And I got the bug right after that, man. I thought I I thought I knew how to shoot until I went out to that match and. Uh, you know, I remember sitting there shooting and this guy, you know, because all, all the guys from, you know, over where Kyle worked seemed like the, the, the guys who are out there now, like Kyle, uh, like Pat McNamara, um, I'm trying to think, uh, some of the other guys that I saw, Mike Pannone, mm -hmm. you know. You would see those guys at the at the Fayetteville Practical Shooters Association, you know, and mm -hmm. they would be out there burning it down, you know, and, you know, you could kind of tell those who those guys were. And this one guy was just just out shooting all of us, man. I'm like, who is this guy? What's your name? And I was talking to this guy. I go, what do you do full time? And he goes, nah, I'm an electrician. <laughs> ah, dude. Um, but I, I was just uh, blown away by that. You know, this guy had the uh, the 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 discipline, self-discipline to shoot on his own like that. And then, um, you know, later on when I got in a position where I could bring trainers to our unit at Fort Bragg, uh, you know, I asked guys like Kyle and guys from his unit, like, Hey, who are you guys bringing in? And I went down the list and we started bringing those same guys over, um, and started training with them and they would come out and they would, I mean, they would just, guys would have all these excuses. Oh, you're just, you're shoot better than us because you're shooting with a space gun or something like that. <laughs> And uh, they they would say, no, my gun's just like yours. And they're like, well, it's probably tricked out, you know. And they would literally take our guns and outshoot us with our guns, you know. Yeah, um, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. But I, I really enjoyed watching those guys shoot and learn a lot. And it was just, for again, one of those things where I would pay, I would have paid to, to have that experience and I was getting it for free, you know. Now, there is a very famous instructor out there. Right, who you can claim you got him into competitive shooting. Oh yeah, yeah. And, and who and not a lot of people know. Actually, when you told me, I was like, "No shit, man." So who, who is that person, Mike, that you got into competitive shooting? Yeah. So uh, it's funny that you mentioned that because I was out at a shot show and I ran into, uh, um, uh, man, I see his face right now. Um, uh, we were we were Safal constructors together, mm -hmm. and. Uh, he came out. Um, what is that? Uh, I'm trying to think of the name of his company is uh, Way of the Gun. Yep. Uh, what, what's, um, what Are you blanking? Are you I'm blanking, blanking on, right on, I on blanking. Frank Proctor's name? Oh, Frank, yeah. <laughs> Frank, I'm sorry, I forgot your name. Hey, man. man, I see your face, bro. Uh, I just got he's home. Not that, he's not that important, bro. Don't <laughs> worry about it, man. You know. <laughs> We'll edit that out, right? No. We'll edit that. Oh no, that's a bro. 
That's damn uh, it. <laughs> uh, I, I run into uh, I run into Frank out at a uh, shot show, you know, and there's all these guys standing around, and he's like, "Hey, Mike, how's it going?" And he tries to introduce me to these guys, and they just uh, kind of blew me off. And he starts talking. He goes, "Man, he goes, Mike Green really got me into shooting. You know, he kind of taught me how to shoot." And all these guys start handing me their business cards, you know. Right. Yep. Um, yep. But uh, yeah, we were Safal constructors, and I had uh, I was maybe maybe a B class guy at the time, you know, and. Uh, and there was another guy, Johnny Nettles, who was probably an A or master class shooter at the time. Johnny's just, uh, he was all into splits and everything. He was the NCOIC there. Mm-hmm. And he and I would shoot together. And, uh, you know, Frank was like, man, he's like, how, how do I how do I really get good at shooting, you know? And I was like, man, you need to start shooting USPSA. And we started going through some drills. And he he called me like a year and a half later. And he says, hey, man, I, I'm an Ipsic Grandmaster. And I'm like, no, 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 you're not. No, you can't be, you know, I mean, and, <laughs> not really. And uh, I looked his name up on the, on the, you know, you could see the classifiers and stuff like that. Yeah, and, man. Oh, man. He just put, you know, he took it to heart, man. And he just sat there and, uh, you know, he, you know, became quite popular. And, and I think that's another thing is when you have guys that go from, you know, a good shooter to a great shooter overnight. I think that says a lot. I mean, look at like the stuff that I did for, I think it's going on close to 30 years now. And you're like, hey, man, you're doing the same thing over and over again. You're not getting any better, you know. Mm-hmm. And then guys who, like Frank, go from, you know, uh, just starting to, you know, uh, a year, year, maybe two years later where he's a, he's a grandmaster. So it shows that they were, you know, he was smarter than I was. You know, he was, uh, you know, more disciplined than I was and, you know, did everything he needed to do. And it's like those are the guys that you want to talk to and say, hey, man, how did you manage to get from point A to point B faster? Um, and I learned from that too, you know, um, you know, I went from B class to master class in less than a year. And, uh, I think a big part of that for me was taking to heart, you know, the stuff that I had knew that I needed to do, but didn't have a way to do it until I uh, started, uh, the, uh, refinement and repetition from, uh, Steve Anderson. You know? Yeah. Let's, let's talk about that because I, I, I always say this and I, I should amend it. I, I should amend it, but you know what? It's my class, so I don't add you. But no one has sold more refinement and repetitions than me and you. Oh yeah, I think other so. than Steve, other than Steve yeah. Anderson, yeah, other yeah. than Steve Anderson, um, and uh, which is nothing. So for so for our uh, self defense minded tactical friends out there, who Steve Anderson is, is that uh, he he uh, runs that shooting show, the podcast. He has a couple of books out. In my uh, estimation, and and you know, talking to Mike, I think he agrees. It is probably the best dry fire book out there for a person that wants to understand what the hell all this performance shooting is about. You know. Uh, would you agree with that, Mike? Yeah, I've got a couple others. Um, they're they're good books. I'm not going to talk bad about other books uh, because I think they're good. Uh, but for me, being as lazy as I am, exactly, <laughs> you know, exactly. His books were like I don't have to move anything around. I've got my three targets behind me. You know, yeah. Um, I don't need a barricade. I don't need you know. A, I, I mean, to me, it's the quickest, easiest way. And I mean, the other thing is that you know. You know, when when you have family and kids and stuff like that, it just it gives you less time to do what you need to do. And um, I, he's taken away the excuses. You know, um, you just you come in, you spend 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, whatever it is, whatever you have. And then if you can do it twice a day, I mean, the results are there. I mean, you saw like uh, a couple of the guys, uh, Ace, you saw Ace, you know, yep. I mean, he all he did was the same thing. I said, hey, man get this book and start doing it. And he did a couple minutes and man, that, that kid's going to be out shooting me pretty soon here. You know? Yep. He just has some small things to show up, man, but yeah. that draw is sick. Yeah. That draw is sick, yeah. man. So yeah. And, and again, you know, mostly when people talk about dry fire books, there's two names that come up at least on the competitive side, right? You have, you have Steve Anderson's refinement and repetition. He's got a couple other books, yeah. uh, but I like that one the best. And then you got Ben Steggers. Right. Yeah, and here's the analogy. Yeah. Here's the analogy that I make. Right. You just got out of, you know, elementary school and you got the basic maths down. Right. And then you take your algebra for the first time and you're like, oh, this is hard. But I got it. I, I, I'm kind of understanding how to get to that next level. Steve yeah. Anderson's books are algebra. Ben's are calculus. Right. <laughs> yeah. You don't start with calculus. Yeah. 
right? And then and that's that's my that, that's my thing, right? And if you think you're smart enough to start with calculus, you're fooling yourself. So <laughs> get both books. Start with Steve. That, 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 that that's my opinion, right? And I think that the drills in uh, Steve's books are much easier uh, applied and translated to a self defense minded shooter. Oh yeah. Definitely. Much more so than Ben's. Much more yeah. so than Ben's. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. So and then so so you got his book right, and so can you tell that story to everybody how you went from B class to master class with barely firing any live rounds? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you know it's funny. I, I just started this program, and then uh, you know it, it just you know timing is you, know, you can never really tell what's going to happen in life, but. Uh, uh, the, the government sent me away to a, a school where it was a military school and I was one of three civilians in this school. So for three months, you know, I, I didn't have access to a firearm. So I was able to bring a, a training gun in my hotel and I put my targets up and, and I was literally busy from the time I got up to the time I went to bed. But, you know, I, I said, you know what, I'm going to follow this routine. And so for three months, I fired and I uh, dry fired in the morning for about 10, 15 minutes and then same thing at night. And then, you know, at a certain level, you know your times, you know what your splits are, you know what your draw time is, you know your transitions. And I, and I was at that point as a B-class shooter where I recorded all that. And I went to the range, and I was faster. And I hadn't shot in three months, you know. And mm -hmm. I'm like, holy cow. Now, I did, you know, I heard people say, well, if you dry fire all the time, you know, you're, you're going to mess up your grip. Your grip won't be strong enough. And I'll be like, yeah, you're absolutely right for about five rounds. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and then and it's like, oh, we need to hold on to this thing. Yeah. Right? So, I mean, it did, you know, I saw it. I felt it. it was like, oh, it, was, it slipped off a little bit. But literally, it was about maybe less than five rounds. And it was like, oh, I just got to grip harder with my support hand, you know. So why do you think those were so what so what helped then, though? I mean, what was it? What was it about your skills that improved without firing a round? And then you figured it out. But what, what, what do you think was the major difference? Well, I think the major difference was I put in the work, you know, yeah. um, you know, I wasn't dry firing, you know, I just started dry firing like that. Um, and, uh, you know, the other thing is I was dry firing wrong before I met Steve Anderson and I was, I read his book and I was still doing it wrong, you know, mm -hmm. and then met Steve, I took a class with him and it was like, oh my gosh, dude, I've been doing it wrong, you know? And he's like, uh, it's right there on page three, you know, uh, <laughs> read the books. not yeah. <laughs> So, uh, th that was it, man. You know, it was literally, I, it was, it, it, it almost made me mad because it was so easy, you know? Yeah. Um, you know, I didn't put in the effort that I should have, and I still made it. And it's, it just makes me mad because when I was younger and I had more desire and more drive, I would have drive fired for an hour, two hours or more, you know? Right. Right. Uh, I, I have an injury in my right hand. And if I dry fire for more than 10, 15 minutes, my hand, I mean, it hurts. It hurts the next day and everything. So, yeah. um, you know, when I was younger, I didn't have that injury and I, and I literally probably would have dry fired, you know, sheesh for hours, you know, if I'd have known it was going to work out that well. And I did in the past, I just was doing it wrong, you know? Yeah. Um, you know, lack of a pro timer, or if I did have a pro timer, you know, it was the raw, you know, a, a not a challenging time, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's funny because you said something in your class about dry fire that was the same exact thing that I had experienced uh, and tell people it, that I learned from Steve Anderson and Frank Garcia. And mm -hmm. that was like, you want to go so fast that you're basically desensitizing yourself to, to that speed so that when yeah. you do live fire, it's, it feels slow. Um, and when I was, uh, when I was uh, an instructor at Fort Bragg, once a year, we used to go to this uh, driving school up here at BSR. So it would take us six hours to drive up to BSR, right? Mm -hmm. And on Friday, after a week of driving, racing, it would take us about four hours to get home. And we're like, <laughs> what's going on here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause you were so desensitized to how fast you were going. You would look down at the speedometer and going, Oh my gosh, I'm doing a hundred miles an hour on the highway. I need to slow down, you know, and you'd slow down. And next thing you know, you're like, Oh, I'm doing a hundred again. Right. Uh, because you, you became desensitized with that. And I noticed that with the dry fire, you know, I became desensitized to speed, you know, um, you know, I would get the gun out there and present it way, way faster. Um, and Frank, Frank Garcia taught me that uh, years ago too, you know, he had me shoot a drill one time and he said, you know, you need to shoot that drill faster. And uh, I shot it faster and I just, I started to miss and I slowed myself down and he got up there and he shot it for me and he said, see the time on the timer. That's the same time you need to get to right there. 
Um, and I got up there and, and, and I told him I can't do it without missing. He goes, I don't care if you miss every target, just go as fast as you can. And I did it and I missed every single target, you know? And he goes, now I want you to slow it down a 10th. And I did, and I hit everything. And he goes, that right there is probably close to, to master class, maybe even GM level. And yeah. I was like, holy cow. Um, and it, it's just, and it was that same process. He did it with live fire, you know? Um, and then of course, I fell off the wagon and didn't continue to, to shoot as much because ammo costs money when you're a civilian, you know? You ain't, you ain't lying. <laughs> you ain't lying. Yeah, I mean, you know, my whole thing with dry fire and, and, and going fast to a degree in what Steve Anderson calls speed mode, I think it just opens up your vision, right? And your vision opens up because you know what's coming. Yeah. You know what's coming and it's not a big deal anymore. You know, you and I talk about seeing... Like in my class, I were talking about seeing it where like if people are shooting three targets, they target, target, target. Instead of seeing all three targets and watching the dot bounce in between and the speed and accuracy just goes through the roof because you're ahead of everything with the information you're bringing in through your vision. And I think that's the key of what dry fire does and pushing yourself in that, you know, yeah. same thing like you were saying with driving, right? Uh, the hardest thing to do sometimes when you acquire level of speed is to slow down because <laughs> it's not natural yeah it's not natural you know you're at that you're at that next level uh you know now you got to actually crawl and you start doing weird stuff we do i'll tell you like i do i'll do demos and when i slow down and i do weird stuff like other people do weird stuff when they speed up yeah you know? so it's it's an interesting phenomenon to kind of go through and watch other people go through um it's just like jujitsu right it's not the guy it's not the strongest guy it's not the fastest guy. It's the guy who's three steps ahead. Yeah, yeah. And if your vision is three steps ahead, you know, which I think I'm going to pat myself on the back for a great segue. Let's talk a little bit about your martial arts background, man, and how that's helped you with, with work and, and shooting and stuff like that. So I know you said you got your blue belt from Hoist, Hoist Gracie. Yeah. If you know who Hoist Gracie is, guys, I'm sorry. You've been living under a rock. So <laughs> let's talk a little bit about your martial arts background, why you think that's important in, in what you have done and what you do. Yeah, I think that's all, it's all inner, you know, it's all related. It's all interconnected. Um, I see a lot of, and the same thing, you know, you, we heard this probably for years in the martial arts world where, oh, that stuff won't work on the street, you know? Yeah. Um, but, um, you know, now you see, um, places at the federal law enforcement academies out there where they're bringing in guys who they're, they're combatives. People are trained, you know, from the Gracie's or some type of jujitsu and stuff like that. So it's, it's more, it's becoming more and more accepted um, because they realize it is practical. But um, you know, I started off uh, in the army, we did all kinds of weird combative stuff, you know? Um, and it was kind of like whatever the flavor of the week was. Um, you know, I was, in, when I was a kid in high school, I, uh, before I joined the army, I had a, uh, a brown belt in Kung Fu. And then, uh, I had a guy on my team who was, uh, you know, uh, like an eighth Dan in like 10 different martial arts and created his own American karate style. Mm. And he was actually part of, uh, part of the army's, uh, well, actually he was, uh, he studied under a guy who was part of the army's combatives program back in the day when they mm -hmm. took a bunch of different styles. Um, and so I trained under him cause he was on my team. So I basically lived with this guy in the team room, you know, for four years, you know, every day after work, we would train mm -hmm. before and after. Uh, so I got a black belt in uh, American karate from him. And, uh, when I, when jujitsu came out, you know, I, I kind of expected him to be like, uh, you know, that this is not what we train or something like that, but he embraced it. He's like, Hey man, he goes, what we're teaching is really a, a, a combination of things, you know? Um, and so that's what we did. You know, we started really embracing jujitsu. Um, and then we started, uh, I was one of the first SF guys to go to the army combatives program that Matt Larson was running Okay. Fort Benning. So we were still doing, I think the lines program and I took leave and went down to Fort Benning. I drove mm. down there and, uh, the, the command at least put me on uh, permissive TDY. So I took leave, but it didn't count as leave, you know, but mm -hmm. they were paying me for it. And Matt let me sleep down there in the gym. You know, I slept on the mat. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, and I was blown away with the program. I thought it was phenomenal. And uh, I had been rolling for well over a year. And he's like, dude, why didn't you tell me you knew all this stuff? He goes, I could have I would have gotten you straight into level two, you know. And I was like, I didn't know, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
and I came back and, you know, we started doing more in the company. Uh, it was, and it was, it was, um, a progressive step-by-step process, you know, and it was just something that we really enjoyed. And then we got, uh, we got hooked up with, uh, uh, Greg Thompson, who was running a lot of stuff at Fort, uh, excuse me, at Fort Bragg, but he's still living up in Raleigh mm-hmm. and he was a black belt under Hoist Gracie. And, uh, we started training with him and he would come down for a week at a time. So we take this mini one week course and then, uh, um, he had a seminar up in, uh, up in, uh, Raleigh and I went up there and was training with him. And next thing you know, Hoist Gracie shows up to one of the seminars and it was like, Oh my yeah. gosh, I can't believe this, you know, <laughs> awesome. um, but, uh, it's, it's real practical, you know, because he would show us stuff that, uh, we put kid on. He's like, so that was the other thing is, you know, people would talk about, well, you're, you're rolling in a gi and this isn't practical and, and great. And, uh, you know, um, he was all about like, Hey man, Greg was like, why don't you put on full kit? Let's do this, you know, and break out the rubber guns and we'll, mm-hmm. we'll see what works and what doesn't work. And it was interesting because there was stuff that I had not known, you know, like how to get out of someone's guard. If you're using a wall, like if you got somebody pinned against the wall and they put you in guard, mm-hmm. well, now you can just twist right out of it with your, with your hands up, you know, mm-hmm. um, and we discovered that by him, you know, him not only having a jujitsu background, but an MMA background, He's like, hey, this is what people do in a cage too. You know? Yeah, so yeah. You can, you can use this same technique in a house, you know. And it's, you know, what if the guy who you're taking down knows jujitsu? How do you get out of his guard? You know. And it was like, wow, you know. And you know, you can't poke him with your gun because you got to uh, engage another target. You know. Right. Right. So, um, and it was no bullshit. You know, he was not messing around. He wasn't like, uh, let's try something squirrely. And you know, it was like, no, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. But if it works, it works. You know. Um, and like you say, you know, and that's the interesting thing is I see a lot of your martial arts background when you're teaching, you know, because you're yeah. like, try this out, you know, try these three techniques out, thumb up, thumb down, some, you mm-hmm. know, mm-hmm. Uh, which one works for you, you know, and you're like, you know, bring that time around, you know, and that's what I liked about training with Greg is he was all about what worked, you know, um, and we're seeing more and more of that. I mean, today is just the people out there that are training or coming from the military, you know, they're getting exposures like, like. Like we wouldn't believe, you know. Yeah, uh, and that all comes from jujitsu. You know, my 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 professor out here, Tony Passos and Sterling, man, he's all about some some instructors just do technique, and you got to figure it out. He want he wants to talk about concepts, man. Yesterday we were doing um, Uma Plata's right from the guard. Uh, for those of you that don't know, Uma Plata is basically a shoulder lock you do with your legs, right? Uh, and well, it's Sort of. I don't want the, my jujitsu guys <laughs> to start going, it's a position, not a submission, yada, yada, right? But the interesting thing is you can start from Uma Plata from an overhook, right? And and my guy, my partner, uh, uh, drilling partner was Andy Trong, and it's very hard to do it on him because he's got the short, thick arms, mm. right? So by the time you get around his 21-inch bicep, you, you can't get any of the gear or anything like that, right? Yeah. So on him, he's like, dude, bro, I want you to overhook me. Not, you're, you're not trapping these arms, you know, yeah. where someone else with very long arms, man, you can get all up in there and stuff like that. So you got to be, you got to understand the concept, you know? So that's, that's awesome that you guys used to do that, man. God, rolling in full kit. Yeah. Good Lord almighty. Good oh, yeah. the pressure you could get on top. Oh the yeah. Full kit on. Ne- neon stomach, <laughs> neon belly with somebody with Oh somebody. dude. Like, they're not going anywhere, bro. Oh know? dude. You just like if you had like high high M4 mags and stuff, right? Yeah. And just keep side pressure and the fucking things going in is oh, oh, yeah. that's awesome, dude. We gotta do that sometime. Anyway. Oh, yeah. <laughs> sucks to be on the bottom. It yeah. sucks to be on the bottom. Get on top, stay on top. Oh, anyway. Yeah. Um so awesome. So so you so you did all that. Uh, are you still rolling these days, man? At all? I, I go down to Capital Jiu Jitsu uh, probably about right. once a year. <laughs> okay, yeah, because your wife does is is a CrossFit instructor there too, right? Is that sometimes, a mark? Yeah, that sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, which is you know free up with the kids, you know. <laughs> but, right. Uh, yeah. yeah. She she goes. I think she was there the other day, but you know we just had another one. So you know. Congrats on that, by the way, man. So, uh, yeah, she was out of it for a while or she wasn't, she's still CrossFits, 
Yeah. But she didn't go to the gym because she got to tag him along too, you know. So, but yeah. now we got a we got a pretty good setup in our garage. You, you haven't been over the house yet, but uh, no, I haven't. Uh, you, you're, where are you at? You're in South Riding area, yeah, right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I got to I got to swing by there, man. It's awesome, dude. Mary being married to meat eater wives. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, no joke, man. You know, it is it is awesome, man. You know, I mean, I'm sure you get the same thing. It's kind of like you know. Uh, I don't remember what it was. There was something I was just like, I didn't want to do something. And she's like, get up and, you know, be a man. And I was like, oh, dude, you know, you call me out. That's what I'm yeah. talking about. Oh, <laughs> bro. Like, like yesterday, man, get done traveling for two weeks. Right. The last thing I want to do is go roll. And she's yeah. like, well, cause we go to different schools, right? She trains over at the basics. Uh, yeah. it's a, it's a health and school. And we talked about that. I think we my talked kid, about that. I take my kid there every now. Oh, that's right. You take your kid there. Yeah. And we're like, and she's like, well, I'm going to go roll. So if you want to sit on your ass, good luck with that. Yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah. All right. And by the way, I'm training tomorrow at, uh, at the box. So if you want to go ahead and stop being a lazy asshole. So, okay. <laughs> let's, let's do this, man. That's let's it, do man. this. So they make, it, they it's make awesome. us better, man. They make us better. Yeah. They do. We don't got a choice, man. We got to keep up with them. So <laughs> it's awesome. It's uh, it's awesome, dude. So cool. So how does that? So how do you think all that like uh, intertwines into like your training philosophy? Because we talked about before, man. You've got such a diverse catalog, and uh, how do you think that's kind of shaped the way you want to train your open enrollment classes? <laughs> Well, I think the, the the biggest thing is that there's a huge difference between my open enrollment basic stuff and my advanced stuff because, mm-hmm. you know, just like years ago, and I'm sure like when the Gracies and they still do it, I believe people still complain about their their, their seminars. Oh, they're too basics, too basic, too basic, because they're going over the fundamentals. Yeah. You know? And they just drill those fundamentals. And, and you know that when you get, you know, when you get higher up and you're a blue belt going against a, a brown belt, that if your fundamentals aren't down, man, he's just, you know, he's just going to crush you like nothing, you know? Yep. You, you've got to at least be able to prevent yourself from being tapped out early. You know, that's the yeah. goal, survive, right? Yeah, yep. Um, and uh, with the with my basic classes, you know, we, re, we really talk about those basics, you know? Um, and people want a lot more advanced stuff. Um, but we, we don't go too far advanced in our basic classes, but our two day advanced stuff, we don't call them advanced, but our two day courses are yeah. really, uh, running and gunning, you know, we've yeah. got folks moving, running, stepping offline. Uh, and, uh, you know, folks don't seem to understand it. If they can't draw the gun and get it up there from a static position, how are you going to do that while moving? You know, Right. I exactly. Mean, um, so we, we get a lot of people that when they come to the advanced stuff, go, wow, I just didn't know, or, you know, but it's, it's progressive, you know, I mean, we still have building blocks on it. And I think that's the other thing is, uh, that I've learned is I've been to so many different shooting schools that they, they, they do it differently as far as their, their program of instruction, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But the thing I like is that in, in jujitsu, you, you do the same thing, you know, you show them what you want them to do. Yep. demonstrate it you know then you have the students imitated and then you practice it you know and start um, refine refine in there and yeah absolutely so i try to do the same thing with my uh with my uh, firearms classes um and the other thing i think that really helps out is that um the the folks out there who are um you know um skipping steps you know they'll have folks going from a draw to maybe transitions right away. Whereas, you know, mm. this, when I was doing jujitsu, it was like, okay, so you go to do the Oma Plata, right? Yeah. What happens? What's the next move if that doesn't work? Oh, maybe we're going to go to a headlock, you know? Right. But they're, they're, they're progressive, you know? And, and you know your next step, like you said, you're three steps ahead, but they build upon each other. And I like to do that with my, uh, my firearms programs. You know, hey, we're going to start off before we run, we're going to walk. Yeah. They're, they're, yeah. Uh, you know? Yeah. Uh, and I think that helps out a lot. And, uh, you know, the other thing is that I've had quite a few students take the same class over and over again. And I like that because it shows the ones who are really interested in perfecting their 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 basics or their technique, you know. Sure. Ab- a- absolutely. And just, um, you know, from you and I talking and, uh, you know, the thing that I really respect about you is because you can make plenty of money in this industry. You know, like you're saying, crawl, walk, run. 
a lot of dudes who just want to keep, keep everybody in the crawl period. Yeah. You know, and you eventually got to break out of that. Um, that's again, you know, actually I use that example with the Uma Plata, you know, about how making things, once you learn how to do everything like your draw, you do a very good explanation of the five point. You call yours a five point, right? Of your draw from three o'clock. No, is it a four point four, or five point? Four. It's a four point. I'm sorry. Okay. Right. Yeah, it's great four point. But then you teach people how to round out those edges and yeah. make it all one thing, right? Yeah. Just like the Uma Plata is the arm bar, is the triangle, yeah. is the Uma Plata, is the arm bar, is the triangle, you know, to be able to flow in between all of those things and making them the same technique is how you get to the run part. Yep. You know what I mean, and 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 in just in our conversations, that uh, you, you do an amazing job of that, and that's really the reason. It's like, hey man, if you just want to learn how to, if you want to learn how to run your gun, because I've never, we've never really talked about mindset and, and and stuff like that, but just running the gun, you know, from what we've talked about and from what I've seen, uh, that's why you're like the dude I always recommend. It's like, hey, if you don't want to learn my stuff, go learn Mike's stuff, you know, because uh, it because it does have all of that flow. Um, Awesome, man. Awesome. So, uh, what's going on these days, right, with you? Uh, you know, I know you do, you're do. you a secret squirrel, right? You, you're teaching your classes. How many guys in your cadre right now that, you, that are uh, teaching with you? I got a total, uh, there's, there's eight of us now. So, I've got some uh, some new faces. We're updating the website. It's mm-hmm. not there yet, but I got about uh, seven guys, eight of us total. Yeah. Okay, Awesome. I've met a couple of them, all, all, all really good dudes. So let's talk about um, about physical fitness, right? Because that's the other part all about this. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you and I are one of the uh, guys out there that actually enjoy things like CrossFit and stuff like that. You know, by the way, we said CrossFit, so everybody drink. <laughs> everybody, <laughs> everybody drink. I got everybody, <laughs> yeah. everybody drink. So I'm a CrossFit baby doing about a year, uh, really enjoying it. You know, but as a jujitsu guy – you know, as an adult male with testosterone ridden, you either do one of two things, CrossFit or jujitsu. And if you don't do both, you make fun of the other guy. That's right. Yeah. Right. Right. And then and then, you know, we got a great out here. I don't know. Do you know um, Jason Sturm, who owns OGG, Old Glory Gym out here? I may have ran across him. Before yeah. Ten, tenth Mountain guy. Uh, he is a, uh, what do they call it? A, uh, I don't know what to call it. He lost his leg. He oh, lost one of his leg from, yeah, he's an amputee, but they call it like a something athlete. I can't remember. I'm going to mess up. It's, it's, it's an awesome PCC, to, you know, politically correct term oh. or whatever that he makes fun of, but, uh, he, he, he's a great dude and we found a good, you know, it, it's, it's an amazing, it's an amazing box. Why do you think that physical fitness or CrossFit in general or anything like that in, 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 in your time, why is that important? Uh, I, you know, I, I think that's, uh, it's especially from a defensive standpoint, you know, I mean, you've got guys out there who have been studying gunfights uh, as civilians for years. Look at John Corriera, right? Mm-hmm. Um, he's got all kinds of stats out there. Um, he watches, he's like the, for those who don't know, he's like the John Madden of, uh, of, uh, civilian shootings, you yep. know, he, yep. active uh, self-protection. Yeah. It's not I, only civilian stuff. It's not only civilian oh, yeah, it's stuff. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. it's LE stuff too, yeah. you know, actually it's civilian LE and Brazil. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, I wish he would take like a little, you know, uh, circles and and draw all over the screen. I think that would be a little bit added flavor. That'd be cool. That'd be cool. That'd be cool. But I mean, you look at that and and you see so many of those uh, incidences where they turn into physical altercations, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, They may be predicated by a physical encounter or your gun may jam or you may not. You may run out of bullets and the fight is still on, you know. Um, you know, I was working recently, uh, helping the FBI teach some stuff and the head cadre down there was stressing to the uh, people that we were training, like, Hey, physical fitness is a huge part of this because, you know, a lot of guys go overseas, they may not have access to their gun, you know? Mm. So, you know, we always tell people in the beginning, Hey, we're going to dispel a couple myths in our classes. One is if you, the only tool is the gun then that's the only tool you have. And that's probably the only one you're going to use. So you need to get some type of martial arts training. Um, And then you also have to be fit because if you have, you know, 
uh, if, if you're not fit, you know, you might not be able to run. And there, there may be times where you got to run away. And, um, you know, with the, uh, with the fitness, with, with CrossFit, and it doesn't have to be CrossFit, but, it, you know, I, I like CrossFit. I think it's an easy, an easy, it's another one of those simple things, you know. Yeah. They put it out there. This, do this, do that. Exactly. Um, yeah. Exactly. But there's, there's other programs out there, you know, high intensity programs out there that, you know, will help people out. But I don't care what it is. We tell our folks, hey, if you're going to do something, you got to be prepared for the fight, you know, and it doesn't matter because that fight could be running away. It could be running to the fight. It could be, you know, once you're there now, what are you going to do? If you don't have the hand to hand skills, you know, you're screwed. Um, if, and if, what's that saying? If, if, uh, if the only tool you have is a hammer, then every single thing out there is a nail. You know? Right. Um, people, people just, I think they, they think that the gun is the ultimate solution and it's, it's not, you know, I mean, um, it's so, I mean, for, look at it for years, you know, I studied martial arts for years and years and years. I joined the army, studied martial arts for more years and more years. And then, you know, probably maybe 10 years, eight years after I, you know, had done all this, you know, had a black belt, you know, some dude had been taking jujitsu for like six months, whip smile. <laughs> exactly. Ex- exactly. Because he knows more ranges. Yeah. Yeah. He knows more ranges. That's, that's the whole thing. And, and, and. We, you know, we, uh, physical fitness is a, is an incorporation of the range. The gun is a part of the range. Hand to hands part of the range. Medical is part of the range. Oh yeah. You yeah. know, you got to have all that stuff. Yeah. yeah. And, and same, same with fitness, you know, I mean, I'd been working out for years and years and years, you know, we'd climb ropes, we do all this stuff. We'd PT, we'd lift weights, we'd swim. And then I do a CrossFit workout and I get smoked by some dude who's been doing CrossFit for like six months. Like, what the heck? Um, dude, so I, hard I, to I, come I, to my gym and get smoked by a mother of three. Yeah. yeah <laughs> you know, I, I got I got a video I got to show it to you. I don't know if yeah. I have, but my wife's like doing 20 pull-ups while she's nine months pregnant. You know, oh, like, oh dude. My gosh, you know, uh, but the, the point is, is that, you know, you've got a quicker, faster way to get from point A to point B and be better. Well, let's let's go for that. So. You got Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, you got Muay Thai, you got all these other different arts that you can get good at in a relatively short period of time and, and be, you know, uh, um, I'd say give somebody a good hard time on the street if they want to take something from you like your life. Yeah. Um, the same with fitness in a couple of months, you know, with very little time, 15, my wife's workouts are 15 minutes and I'm telling yeah. you, I, she, she almost killed me one time. So her, her workouts are brutal, but 15 minutes. Yeah. Uh, and same with, uh, same with, uh, with firearms, you know, you've got, you know, books like by Steve Anderson and you got guys out there who are making grandmaster in less than a year, you know? Yep. Uh, so I look at all these different paths out there that are, you know, here's my path in life for all the stuff I want to be good at martial arts, fitness, shooting. It went kind of like this and this, and this. <laughs> you know, 10 years later I'm here. And then you got some kid who's out there and goes, let me look at, this book and let me do crossfit and let me take jujitsu and he goes here yeah here in like a, less than a year and you're like if, if we're too old to learn from that then we're just too old that being said we old guys have done a lot of work yeah. and these young guys are just okay boom yeah you know i mean there is there to be a 20 or 30 year old dude today today is i mean as far as the the amount of information and skill building ability i mean mike when we were growing up dude martial arts was all smoking fucking mirrors right it was like yeah it's like hey bro uh i know we don't practice eye gouges but if you have the heart of a dragon you can do it when it matters Mm -hmm. Ah, yeah i'm not i don't got anything against eye gouges bro but you know you don't you don't do what you don't practice, you know. Yeah. And that whole thing I'd show you, or, or yeah, I'd show you, but I'd have to kill you type, you know, stuff. And then the UFC comes out. I mean, nobody understands how much that changed the face of martial arts. Oh yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and I think I was talking to Matt Little, right, uh, a while ago on how, like, at least with pistol shooting. Pistol shooting now is starting to emerge out of like the 70s and 80s, right? Into the early 90s of the UFC about what people can do with a pistol. You know, I think the smoke and mirrors is starting to go away and it's starting to be more about 
you know, techniques and concepts and, and speed is being defined instead of this weird smoke and mirrors, you know, my favorite saying type thing. You know, the audience knows what my favorite saying is, right? That I like to poo-poo. Right? <laughs> and it started to be more like an athletic event, just like everything else. You know, oh, yeah. um, you know here's something else. Somebody, so Bev, uh, guys, my wife's name is Beverly. Uh, Bev posted this thing today about jujitsu. She reposted it. It's just, it's not a meme. It's just a word thing of like, uh, the great thing about jujitsu is that it shows men that their strength isn't as important as they thought it was. And it shows women that they are stronger than they ever thought that they were. So this guy on their post there, and he was just being a smart ass. I'm sure he didn't mean anything about it. But something like, uh, nine millimeter doesn't care about how strong you are. <laughs> I was like, come on, bruh. Really? I mean, so my response was, uh, the stronger you are, the harder you are to kill. Right. And I, and I, and the other quote I gave, quote, I don't know if Tom actually, I have heard him say this, but I don't know if he came up with it But the whole thing is what do people usually do after you shoot him with a handgun? Usually what they were doing before you shot him with a handgun. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. Yeah, uh, and the stronger they are, the harder they are to stop. I mean, yeah. you've seen that obviously, you yeah. know, uh, in, in doing what you would do. I mean, I'm, you agree with that, right? Oh yeah, no doubt. I, I, I watched a guy get shot with a 50 cal, you know, and, uh, I thought, you know, I thought this guy was going to be dead, you know, and I went to go help him out, you know, or, and I was shocked at all the blood and he was like, are you going to help me or are you going to watch me bleed? <laughs> oh, okay. Oh my God. That's like a movie line, bro. I know that guy, yeah, he had some really good ones. He was an old Vietnam vet too, you know? Yeah. Former SF guy. But, uh, yeah, yeah. That guy was phenomenal. And uh, if he was a big fat slob, he would, he would have been done. Uh, no, the guy, he was calm and cool the whole time, you know, to, you know, awesome. uh, but no, I mean, you're, you're absolutely right. You know? And, and the thing is, is that in, you know, we can't always have a gun with us. That's yep. the unfortunate truth, you know? Uh, and I travel, I travel a lot. I go overseas and, uh, you know, good portion of the places that we're going, we don't have time to get an arming packet or, you know, it's not a, a place where you would carry, but we're going to these places for a reason, you know, right. um, whether it's high crime or terrorism or something like that. And uh, you'll get there and, you know, the only thing you may have on you is, you know, if you're able to even bring a knife, you have your knife and then you've got your hands, man, or your feet, and your body and, you know, whatever fitness level that you're at. And uh, so guys that say stuff like, hey, you know, uh, you know, nine mil doesn't care how you know strong you are. Well, then they are probably being unrealistic about their own abilities and uh, not just abilities, but where they're at, you know, because. Yeah. Uh, I can guarantee that there's people out there that are not carrying all the time. I would love to say that, hey, you know, I carry 365, 100 days a year, and, uh, you know, I have a, I'm a med kit and everything with me all the time. But the truth is that, no, you know, I've got to go to D.C. i got to put a suit on, you know. Yep. I've got to go to these different places where you can't carry a firearm, um, you know, and you just you're 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 gonna go overseas sometimes. You know, I'm not carrying a gun when I'm in a in an airplane. You know, um, yeah. Uh, what are you gonna do then? You know, um, you know, I make sure I carry a good solid uh, metal pen with me, but uh, or at least two. But yeah, uh, yeah. You know, people don't realize a lot of the stuff that they're saying. Um, it's just you know, it's probably bravado. You know. Um, it's got to be, but man, I just like, are you joking? Are you really fooling yourself with that, man? Because uh, I got it. That's your only option, man. But like you were saying, those options are taken away from you uh, by law or environment all the time. So if when all you, you know yourself when all you got are these things. Yeah. You know, you, you know, by, and for the podcast people, I'm holding up my hands. Right. <sighs> Uh, I always forget that, dude, because I do this on the twos, right? And then I get to the, I listen to my own podcast. I'm like, oh, I should probably explain that. So, <laughs> exactly. Next time, so I'll listen, hand gesture, I'll remember that. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So, bro, we're coming up at about uh, 49 minutes here. I try to keep these to about an hour. So, we're at the uh, uh, the internet's favorite section of the podcast of get it off your chest. All uh, right. Uh. So, you know, what do people need to start doing to get better? Or what do people need to stop doing to get better? Uh, or anywhere else we want to talk about, don't talk about your neighbors. Nobody cares, right? So, <laughs> Yeah. 
Uh, well, I guess my biggest, one of my biggest pet peeves is folks not dry firing enough. I think that's, that's just one of the big things is guys got to go out there and they got to get Steve Anderson's refinement and repetition. Um, I'm a huge fan of that. Uh, and then the other thing is gimmicks. Um, you know, I, I really hate the, the gimmicky laser stuff that everybody tries to pull off, you know. Uh, the only the, the only one I, I really have given a little bit of thought to because it's not the same thing is uh, is the um, what is the it measures treasure uh, trigger press. Um, what is that? Um, oh, the uh, Mantis X. Man, yeah, because that's not it's not you're not doing a you're not shooting a laser. You know, all yeah. these folks out there that use a laser to see what they're looking at are fooling themselves. I, I agree with that. You know, um, and if they if they think, oh, well, I'm not looking at the laser, they need to go talk to their optometrist and ask him, say, hey, you know, I'm I'm shooting this laser. Is there a possibility that I'm actually looking at the laser? Because I know I'm looking at the sights. Well, now you're seeing it at least out of your peripheral and it's taken away from, you know, your opportunity to see the sights. Um, so th those are the biggest things um, as far as gear and training goes. But the other thing is the, the community itself. Mm. You know, I've seen a couple of videos. I've seen a couple of articles. Uh, where people are bashing people because of their backgrounds, you know, and I've seen it from one spectrum to the other end. So I've seen a couple where the more recent thing is, uh, you know, uh, is don't train with these military guys because they don't know what it's like to be me. You know, they don't know what it's like to be a civilian on the streets and blah, blah, this. And, you know, their rules of engagement are different. I'm like, well, yeah, my, my rules of engagement when I was in the military were probably more strict than living in California, you know? Yeah. Um, and they don't seem to realize that. Uh, the other thing is that I, I didn't go everywhere I went. I didn't go with a whole backup, you know. I mean, there were a lot of places that I would go in the military with just one or two of us, you know. Um, and the other thing is carrying concealed. You know, I remember the first time I went on the, uh, a trip for the military, you know, uh, and they said, oh, you're in charge of force protection. Here's your gun. I'm like, okay, so I got a gun. Guess what? I don't have a holster. <laughs> so, you know, um, you know, and you're in bad places, you know, and so, yeah, you didn't have backup, you know, you didn't have all these other things that people would typically have to at least access to 911, you know, in the mm -hmm. middle of uh, some village in the middle of nowhere, you know, so it was probably far worse than a lot of us. And the other thing is instructional capabilities, you know, um, as, a, as a former SF guy, people don't realize that SF guys, our primary mission was to train foreign uh, countries, you know, train mm -hmm. foreign militaries. So we got a lot, even in our basic training uh, in the Special Forces Q course, how to interact and train in adult theory and how to go through that explain, you know, imitate, demonstrate, and then practice process, um, even back then. So even if, say, like, you know, like someone was lucky, like I, I consider myself lucky to have been an instructor in the Army and actually gone through a two-week course to teach me about adult learning and, and, and so on and so forth. Right. Um, and then on top of that, you know, you had to right front seat a class several times before you were allowed to teach it. And then when you did, you went to a murder, what we called a murder board. And so you taught a class and then all your peers, your other instructors would be in the back and they would just like murder you, you know, like mm -hmm. you did that messed up. You did that messed up, you know? Yeah. And the same goes true with, with law enforcement. I hear guys talking the same thing. Oh, cops don't know what it's like because they, uh, you know, they were arresting people, but you know, these guys out there when they're off duty, you know, they fall into a different situation. Sometimes mm -hmm. they're traveling out of state. And especially if a guy was a, taught at a law enforcement academy you know he's going through those presentation processes and stuff like that and they're training with high level people out there especially the guys <laughs> teams and then the same holds true as i hear people out there they'll poo poo everything oh he's a competitive shooter he doesn't know what it's like to be uh, a guy on the street i'm telling you, man that the, you know when i was in the army we brought a lot of ipsy grandmasters down to fort bragg and we trained with a lot of them and uh you know, we use those skills to get better at doing what we did. And they would come up and tell us, hey, we're not here to teach you tactics, but we're right. going to teach you how to do this and this a lot faster. Right. And so that that's, you know, if people, unless you see an instructor out there who's just teaching all, you know, just utter crap, I think most people just need to really keep quiet about what they're, they're saying about these other instructors, you know. Yeah, uh, that's interesting, man. I've never heard someone say, actually, actually, that's not true. The one time I heard someone say, uh, these special operations guys need to stop teaching concealed carry classes. Mm. Um, and that was kind of knee jerk because, well, they put up a video and it was a concealed carry class and none of those dudes were carrying concealed. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> and, but people, and people love to jump on that. Right. And I think on all sides, part of it is 
the whole marketing thing, you know, uh, the one thing about this industry that I will tell you, and I know this is your end, not mine, man, but it's just like people don't understand marketing. The number one rule of sales and marketing is don't disparage your competition. Oh, yeah. Because it makes you look bad. Yeah. Right. And then it also puts you on the defensive that you have to define and defend everything you do. Right. And then I think that comes from everything, right? Where the civilian trying to want to be it wants to be out there and 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 poo-pooing on uh military guys because they always had a team and they nobody cared about their backstop and all that other bullshit. That's yeah. that's dumb, right? On the other hand, I've heard it plenty of times of guys coming out of the groups or coming out of the teams going, Well, if you don't if you don't have battle experience and blah yeah. blah blah, you shouldn't be teaching anybody anything. Come on. Yeah, you hear it all the time. Yeah. You know? It's like they forgot. Like I don't, I don't know if they're doing it as much if they're bringing in these big competitors like they used to. But I'm telling you, man, back in the day, I'd say I, I wish I could compare or see some of the old shooting stuff that we used to do and how antiquated yeah. it was. And, uh, uh, you know, the stuff that we learned that we brought back, we incorporated into our Safalc or our CQB courses. I mean, we got that from the competitors, you know. Yep. Um, and I think there's so much to be learned from that, you know, um, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think that, uh, I'm going to go out there and if, uh, I'm being shot at that, I'm going to go around a barricade and expose myself first to get a better angle on the last target, because I know it's the last target, because when someone's shooting at me, I, I don't tend to do stuff like that. You know? <laughs> exactly. Um, I, and I do know that, you know, people make mistakes, you know, like I've always talked about, you know, when, you know, you don't want to crowd cover, right? You don't want right. to get too close to cover. But I remember, you know, getting shot. I was with another guy. He was a former force recon guy. And we both like hugged up against each other. And we were this far away from the cover. And then we stopped and looked at each other like, oh, what are we doing? Because we realized that we had violated all the rules that, you know, so you do make mistakes like that, right? Sure. But it wasn't a competition scar, you know. It was just a basic natural reaction to get too close because you're getting shot at, you know. Right. Yeah. Um, but you know the the stuff that you learn that you tr you practice over and over again, the the repetition of reloading, of getting the gun up faster, and all that, all that translates to um, defensive stuff or you know even offensive stuff. But um, I, I really uh, one of the things I really enjoyed about your class was. Um, I thought it was kind of funny because you would say something and you say, not a tactical class, but I was like thinking, <laughs> but it, 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 it is, you know, I mean, that, you, that is, you know, getting the gun out there before the bad guy does is, is tactical. And I tell folks in our classes, you know, bring out the pro timer and I go, Hey, you know, the pro timer doesn't say, you know, Hey, you're a barrel chested freedom fighter. Your technique was better. It tells you a ton. And, and what's more tactical being faster and killing the bad guy before yeah. he kills you. You know? Yeah, 100%. It's just like we say in jiu-jitsu, dude. When you get into a street fight, nobody asks you your belt level. <laughs> right? When you get into a fucking fight, no one's going to go, so listen, bro. Yeah. Were you a SEAL or were you a USPSA Grandmaster? No one cares. Right. No yeah. one cares. He gets the gun out first, accurate shots, is going to win. It's yeah. it's going to win, you know? And just and just so and we talked about this, Jose hates it when I, Jose Gordon hates it when I say that. To the point where he says things like, what did he say in my class, dude? When he was like, he goes, you know, I know, I know Jedi says this is not a tactical class and it's not and blah, blah, blah. But you know what? He helps me kill bad guys better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was like, yeah. I put that on a shirt or, <laughs> yeah. or something. But again, I do that for the internet, man. The minute I don't start saying that, dude, all the pseudo tactical guys, right? Because you know what? My friends that are truly the face shooting meat eaters they don't give a shit they don't they, they don't care i, I yeah. do this because i don't want to punch a troll in the face when i meet him you yeah. know what i mean so and I, I think that's a uh i think that's an excellent representation you know is the the folks out there who know the most who've been who've seen the most are the ones who are saying hey jedi why don't you show me this dot thing you know <laughs> yeah 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 a absolutely and i'm very humbled every time when um a, you know a person uh, with a similar background to you, uh, wants to come out and, and do that. So awesome, man. Well, Hey brother, where can people find you, man? Lord, throw it out there. All the social medias, man, where can they find your class schedule? How can they get a hold of you when they got questions? So we've got, um, our main website is www.green-ops.com. That's ops.com 
green-ops.com. And then uh, we are, we're on Facebook, you know, um, Green Ops. I think it might be Green Ops Inc. Mm-hmm. Um, on uh, Instagram, it's Green Ops Inc. Uh, we're on, on YouTube. But um, uh, probably, I, I think right now, our probably most interactive is going to be either YouTube, or excuse me, is um, Facebook or Instagram. Um, but you know, the other thing to consider is that, you know, when I'm at, um, I'm out traveling or something like that, I mean, I have access to stuff. So, you know, my wife does a lot of my stuff for me, you know, I mean, Mm -hmm. so, um, I mean, she's amazing as much work as she does, you know, it's just, it's phenomenal, but that's it, you know, um, that's our main, uh, main thing right there. Um, maybe one day this will get bigger, but right now I, I don't really see us getting too much bigger, you know? Yeah, but you I mean you're you're putting on some good stuff, man. Um, you know, I I tell everybody, uh, even though my schedule is crazy this year and it's already starting to be crazy for for next year as well, man. I want to get in and 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 uh, get some more carbine classes. You know, I uh, I took one. You weren't there, but I took one from Green Ops back back in the day, and that was a great class. But uh, I just want to get some more trigger time, you know, on the carbine. And uh, you know, I tell everybody, man, uh, I'm very fortunate to live where I live because you're out here and you're the guy I'm going to see to get that stuff squared away. So, cool. oh yeah, I want to take another red dot, man. I'm telling you, I got that. I got the bug really bad. I want to start shooting matches, but uh, it just seems like every weekend we're busy. But uh, yeah. Man, I tell you, that was so much fun, you know? I mean, well, I don't know if you saw it in the alumni group. Uh, Bev had started a poll because uh-huh. that, la- that last class we did in Berryville, everybody wants, like, the same people to come because that uh-huh. was a great class. I was, was. I was pretty epic, man. Good dudes. Good I, I, dudes. I, you know what? It's it's a testament to, to you is that the weather absolutely sucked on Saturday. Oh, that was horrible on Saturday, man. It, not one person complained or griped or said anything. I didn't I, give anybody time. <laughs> <laughs> we got a lot of stuff to get through, people. Shut up. Let's go. <laughs> I was. I mean, I, I brought a lot of cold weather gear, too, you know, and I was yeah. still like, oh, my gosh, dude, this, this is this is incredible, man. I can't figure yeah. out how cold this is. Yeah, yeah. And then the next day it was 70. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, un- unreal. Yeah. But uh, I'm telling you, man, I got I got the bug, man. I really it just the the distance shooting, seeing how I mean, like I was like, man, I, I know I yanked that. I saw the dot move, you know, I'm like, yeah. I missed it. And I got up there and it's like, oh, it's still in the A zone. You know? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Man. Yeah. I mean, because what was it like you guys you wound up doing on one of the King of the Hill series? I think it was like a one one five, twenty five 25 yards to yeah. center popper. Yeah, it was like a one. It was like a one one five. Right. But dude. Dots are slow. I know. And people, you know, I told, I told my <laughs> wife, I showed my wife a video, you know, she's like, wow, that's pretty fast. And I go, yeah, that's at 25 yards. And she was like, that's, tw- you guys are shooting at 25 every week. Oh, yeah. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm telling you, uh, you know, the, I'm still, you know, not as fast right now, but I think a lot of it is like you said, is, is mental. Cause I see when I, when I let it go, yeah, it comes out, man, it does. And uh, yeah, here's my theory with great iron shooters like yourself, right? I don't think it's a matter of the, the letting go part. It's just like when you go from shooting a Glock to like a 1911, right? Yeah. That, that, that subliminal crank down on the Glock that you always do. And then you pick up a 19, you're like, oh, oh, that's right. I don't need to do that shit anymore. <laughs> I think it's the same thing with vision, right? It's not so much you don't know where to look, but it's a height over bore issue. Yeah. Where irons are here and the dot is up here. Once you square that away. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm telling you, man, it's, 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 it's like, I want to shoot it. I want to shoot it on the weekends. I want to train with it. I want to, because I see the potential with it, you know? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, dude. Oh yeah. But yeah, dude, we'll get together. I appreciate your offer to kind of host me, man. I always forget Virginia because yeah. nobody in Virginia calls me because I'm I'm my own host here. Yeah. You know? So I forget about it, you know. Yeah. So yeah, we'll get that squared away, brother. Yeah, well, anyway, we'll, man, we'll I, I appreciate it for you. So you don't have to bring any targets or anything like that. We'll just say there it. you go. There you go. <laughs> awesome. Awesome, dude. Well, I appreciate you being on here, man. Um, so I'm going to pay the bills for myself. Hey, guys, uh, check out modern uh, uh, the classes if you want to come train with me. Uh, I am literally coast to coast. Uh, super blessed and fortunate in that. Uh, go hit that. Uh, I'm offering AIWB classes, red dot classes, combinations thereof. Would love to train with you, man. And uh, I promise I will make you better. 
Uh, that being said, guys, hey, Mike, thanks again. Green Ops, look them up. Uh, great, great American, uh, great shooter. Uh, learned a lot from him uh, in just just talking to him, you know. So uh, after you get done with all that, guys, go out, train, because you need to be good, stay safe, get training. Peace out. Thank <laughs> you.